A naked Florida man attacked a woman with a machete because she didn't have a crack pipe. A city in Florida hired police without doing background checks. Circle K gas stations in Florida will be selling marijuana soon. And there's a surge of flesh-eating bacteria in Florida. These are the weird stories for Friday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian inside a closet and the only daily weird news podcast that does Florida Fridays. That's right. All the weird degenerate news from this week out of one state, the state that we love, yet we avoid, Florida. A naked Florida man named Hercules attacked a woman with a machete because she did not have a crack pipe. This title really sums up the state of Florida, does it not? Uh, Got a guy named Hercules in the story. He's naked, obviously. He's a Florida man. He's got to be naked. And uh, he attacked a lady who didn't have a crack pipe because, like, let's face it, if you're a a Florida resident... You can't leave your house without a crack pipe. It's required. You're a Florida man or Florida woman. You must have a crack pipe on you at all times. This is the only state where you can open carry crack pipes. (laughs) All right, now dipping into the story, let's get all the details. A Florida man who is naked has been arrested, facing three felony charges. Police say he attacked a Florida woman with a machete because she did not have a crack pipe. He's 45 years old. His name is Roberto Hercules. Hercules, Hercules, mama little Hercules. Hercules was arrested by the Miami-Dade police, who say Hercules was completely naked, wearing only a cowboy hat. Well, if he's wearing a cowboy hat, he's not completely naked, guys. Hercules had pink painted fingernails when the attack happened. (laughs) Pink painted fingernails. I've never met a Hercules with pink nails before. How lovely. Uh, Well, you know, he's just getting ready for the parade. According to the investigators, the woman in question was riding her bike in the area of Northwest 74th Street and South River Drive. You know the area, guys. That's a place you're not allowed to be without your crack pipe. Um, At this juncture, Hercules approached her, asked her for a crack pipe. Officers say Hercules attacked the woman who said she did not have a crack pipe. (laughs) He's like a crack pipe toll booth operator. Crack pipe, bring out your crack pipe. You got it? Okay, you may pass. You got a crack pipe? You may pass. What, what What are those, needles? You may not pass. Come back with a crack pipe. According to the police, Hercules hit the lady with a machete in various places. This is terrible. The victim jumped from her bike and ran away. She was hospitalized. Thankfully, she's in stable condition, but she's got some minor brain bleeding because of Hercules and his machete and his pink nails. Police caught up with Hercules sleeping. I love how it says they caught up with him. Like it's just, yeah, we're going to go catch up with him a little later, see what his deal is. He was sleeping in a tent, um, naked with painted nails. Investigators located two cowboy hats also in the man's tent. Hercules reportedly told the police that he wanted to, quote, get shot, but surrendered peacefully. I mean, why arrest him peacefully when, you know, grant him his wish of getting shot, guys? (laughs) Sounds to me like a guy walking around naked with a machete, swinging it at people's heads, making them bleed. Probably should be shot. But no, 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 guys, it's always rehabilitation for people like this. I'm sure in two months he'll be a fine, suited up citizen. He won't be naked, swinging a machete on the streets of Miami-Dade. Well, I'll trade you my machete for your crack pipe I left mine in a public restroom Saturday night I'll trade you my machete for your crack pipe Well, I'm a Florida man and I don't feel right without my crack pipe A brand new Florida police department didn't conduct background checks on the cops they hired. Many cops who left under a cloud from their former police jobs, many were fired or suspended or forced out by their old departments, were hired and are now back on duty, welcomed in by the Pembroke Park Police Department. 
Pembroke Park is a small town determined to create a new police department. <laughs> a new police department with some dirty cops, it turns out. This Pembroke Park Police Department acknowledged it didn't subject all of its officers to full customary background checks. Instead, just hired them. Just let them in. Yeah, why not? They're only police officers, right? It's not like they have important roles in the culture. It's not like they're going to be carrying around guns and wielding any sort of power or influence in the community, right? Why give them a background check? Well... The media claims they didn't give background checks because the department opened earlier than expected in order to avoid a four-month gap without any police coverage at all because the town apparently ended its contract with the sheriff's office. So they were going to go a while without any police officers, so they were just like, Hey, you! <laughs> you got all your limbs? Can you spell? Nah, we don't need you to spell. Come on! <laughs> says here they hired 15 officers and detectives, etc., and they told the media they they did forego some elements of a traditional background check because they were in a big hurry. Records show the town skipped sections of customary background checks, including the officers who had faced issues in their past jobs. Only two of the 15 new members were given polygraph tests. Three of them given psychiatric tests. Only three given psychiatric tests. Mm, how comforting. And five of them tested on physical agility. <laughs> only, five, only five. You couldn't even test physical agility, man? <laughs> Come on, that's so easy. I could test you on physical agility. I don't own a polygraph. I can't give you a psych test, really. But I can test physical agility. Like, can any of these guys even run? I mean, what are we dealing with here? Among law enforcement agencies, the physical agility tests are generally considered necessary to detect previous injuries that could later be fraudulently claimed as a worker's compensation issue, as well as their ability to chase fleeing Florida men. Because the officers were all active members coming from other police departments, they say it didn't require a need to do all these customary background checks. No, no need. Uh, now, despite all the flack that they've received, uh, apparently these new officers are doing a pretty good job over there. They detailed the department's work in the first two weeks when they were operating. There were about 300 total calls for service, according to the police chief. Officers have done some traffic stops and responded to about 21 crashes as of last Friday. They recovered some stolen items and worked to deter some drifting which is when drivers intentionally skid or drive in circles. Officers helped remove a car that was stuck on the train tracks. One officer was slightly injured while ensuring no one else was in a burning structure. They saved a couple cats from trees. And only seven of them left their car with no clothes on, according to the mayor. Florida man can soon buy his marijuana at gas stations. That's right. Floridians will soon be able to buy some marijuana and cannabis products, along with cigarettes and snacks, at Circle K gas stations. Circle K is uh, working with Green Thumb Industries, one of the largest U.S. cannabis producers, to install some cannabis sales in these Circle K gas stations, which there are quite a few of them. Under a new partnership between the companies, starting next year, weed will be sold at 10 Rise Express dispensaries with separate entrances from the gas stations. Okay, so only 10 to begin with, and there's going to be a separate entrance. Among the products that will be for sale are cannabis flour, pre-rolls, gummies, and vapes, which Green Thumb will supply from a 28-acre facility that the company is building in Ocala, Florida. The deal with Circle K will make it easier and more efficient for patients to purchase high-quality cannabis as part of their everyday routine when stopping by their local convenience store. Isn't that great? How convenient. Get a little gas, buy your cannabis, some Twinkies for the road. Well, this is nothing new to me. Weed has always been accessible at gas stations, in my experience. That's where I would meet my dealers often. <laughs> gas stations, behind a Walmart, Radio Shack parking lots, you know, the typical safe places. Uh, and all they got to do is legalize prostitution, and then you can go to your local Florida gas station and get the trifecta, gas, grass, and ass, right? <laughs> gas, grass, and ass, guys. Now, in case you've been living under a stone, marijuana is sold in typically standalone dispensaries in parts of the U.S. that have legalized it, with cannabis allowed for medical use in 37 total states and for recreational use in 19 others. Circle K's owner is a Canada-based company, and they 
released a statement. They said, to be clear, Circle K is not selling cannabis in its U.S. stores. No, no, no. We are leasing adjacent space to the cannabis company. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, buddy. Whatever you say. Hey, I'm not going to put down this enterprise at all. I mean, I think Floridians need more marijuana in their lives. They need to chill out. If their drug of choice in Florida was marijuana, you'd see fewer naked people wielding machetes. You'd see less violence, less crime. Marijuana kind of in general is a more chill drug, in my opinion. Uh, and in Florida, they could use a more chill drug. I also just love the idea of rolling into a gas station and being like, yo, fill it up on five and give me a pack of pre-rolls. I got to go substitute teach today. Florida is seeing a surge of flesh-eating bacteria. That's right, guys. Flesh-eating bacteria, as if there wasn't enough problems in Florida. Floodwaters and standing waters following Hurricane Ian pose many risks, including infectious diseases, such as the flesh-eating bacteria known as Vibrio vulnificus. Now we have the Florida Department of Health warning everybody uh, shortly after Hurricane Ian made landfall in Florida, they urged the public to take precautions against infection and illness caused by Vibrio vulnificus, urging people to stay away from standing waters, this sort of thing. Before the hurricane struck, 37 cases of V. vulnificus infection had been reported for 2022 in Florida. Shortly after the storm, that doubled. The number shot up to 65. Most of the newly reported cases occurred in Lee County, where Hurricane Ian made landfall. The department's website notes that these counties experienced, quote, an abnormal increase in cases due to the impacts of Hurricane Ian, they believe. Many of the Lee County residents who were infected by a Volnificus after the storm did so through exposure to Hurricane Ian floodwaters that occurred from the storm surge entering their homes or during post-storm cleanup, according to a department spokesperson. But as the storm waters have abated, so too have the flesh-eating bacterial infections as well, thankfully. Flesh-eating bacteria isn't new to Florida. In 2021, Florida reported 34 cases of a vulnificus infection, 10 of which were fatal. In 2020, they had 36 cases, 7 of which were fatal. The number of cases seen this year is unusual since the health department began reporting data in 2008. Annual reported cases have generally ranged from 16 to 50 a year. Uh, now, some of the symptoms of flesh-eating bacteria aren't exactly your flesh being eaten, um, Typically, you'll get fever, fatigue, uh, blisters, of course, um, low blood pressure, redness of the skin, and a crackling sensation under the skin, possible nausea and kidney failure. Uh, there's still time for you to move out of Florida. I just want to let everybody know, because if you think these hurricanes are going to subside, I mean, you're basically living in a swamp over there, so... Uh, being exposed to floodwaters is going to be part of your life over the next few decades until Florida is completely sunken into the ocean. You have a little time, though, guys. There's still some time, though, guys, so I advise all my Florida listeners to sell your property, hit up a Circle K near you, get yourself some pre-rolls on your way out of Florida, and then, you know, go live a normal life somewhere without flesh-eating bacteria. Hey, my friends, thank you for spending some time with Weird AF News Today, I hope you're enjoying your weekend, or you're about to, or you already did. I want to give shout-outs to everybody who sent me Florida articles in the past 48 hours. Super helpful. You can always send me stuff to funnyjones at gmail.com or my Instagram, at funnyjones. If you'd like to call the show, we have a number here. You can leave a little message. You can uh, give me a critique or just a simple shout-out. Or just introduce yourself. It's 646-450-2012. I love to hear from my listeners, so don't hesitate to give me a little ringy-ding-dingy. Uh, if you guys would like to support the show, I have a Patreon. Yeah, that's how we do it around here. It's patreon.com slash weirdafnews. In addition to supporting the show with a couple bucks a month, you can uh, get access to a lot of extra weird content and content that I create myself as well. So you get a little bit of Jonesy. If you want a little extra me, you may not want more of me. I mean, it's five days a week as it is. I'm, I may be in your life too much, 
but that's okay. It's a really cool thing to do. Check out the Patreon by going to weirdafnews.com and click on the Patreon banner or downloading the Patreon app on your smartphone and doing a search for Weird AF News. I want to give a shout out and some encouragement to one of my listeners who's going through some crapola right now. Uh, uh, Mike Arazan, who is a fan of the show, uh, is, um, is going through some shit. So I just want to give Mike a shout out and encouragement, and uh, we all should. Um, you know, that this place, this podcast is not just inform- informational. Uh, educational and entertainment. It's also a, a sort of community where we all have to kind of um, support each other and be there for each other, I think. Anyways, at least this is what it's turned into. I didn't think it would turn into something like this, but um, I got so much love from the listeners that it kind of has become a community more so than anything, um, to me anyways. And that's kind of what keeps me going, you know. Of course, I love to entertain people, and I have been doing so, uh, you know, for nearly 20 years. Uh, but there's something else going on with this podcast, and it's called Community. And it's something that, um, you know, we all need in life right now. So shout out to Mike. Shout out to all of you. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Please reach out. I'd love to hear from you. <laughs>